Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are going to cover more high-yield content that you need to know about organic chemistry for the MCAT, specifically nucleophiles, electrophiles, and leaving groups. In this video, we're going to delve into these essential concepts and explore the mechanisms of SN1 and SN2 reactions. However, I want to let you know I am going to really simplify these topics because the truth is you don't need a deep understanding of these to still crush the MCAT. So let's jump into it with nucleophiles. Nucleophiles are molecules or ions that possess a lone pair of electrons, shown here is those two dots, or a pi bond that are attracted to positively charged centers, commonly referred to as electrophiles. So nucleophiles love electrophiles. A nucleophile is what its name says. It's nucleus loving. And the nucleus is positively charged. So it loves positively charged things. It can attack and form a bond with electrophiles, resulting in a new covalent bond. So you see here, after the reaction occurs, we have a new covalent bond between the hydroxide and that carbon molecule, that carbon atom. Common examples of, of nucleophiles you're likely to see are hydroxide ions, like one here, alkoxides, and amino groups. Now let's take a, a glance at electrophiles here. Electrophiles are molecules or ions that possess a positive charge or are positively polarized and are attracted to negatively charged centers, also known as nucleophiles. Electrophiles are electron loving. So electro and phile, electron loving. They can accept a pair of electrons from a nucleophile forming a new covalent bond. Electrophilic reactivity increases as the positive character of a compound becomes more pronounced. So the way I like to find electrophiles on the MCAT is draw out some dipoles. So let's take a look at this oxygen. It's going to be really pulling on uh, the electrons within this carbon. And because it's going to be grabbing so many electrons, it's going to leave this carbon partially positive. And because it's partially positive, this is going to make it an electrophile. It wants more electrons because it's electron poor. So it's going to be more reactive to something with a negative charge like this nucleophile. Now let's talk about leaving groups. Leaving groups are molecular fragments that retain the electrons after they're removed in a reaction. Once a covalent bond is broken, this is what leaves the big molecule. The best leaving groups can stabilize the additional charges through resonance or induction. So what are some examples of this? Well, weak bases. Weak bases are amazing leaving groups because they can better accommodate those negative charges gained upon departure from the substrate. Some other things you want to look for for what makes a good leaving group, something that's going to be uncharged once it leaves, something that's really big in size. And the third thing here I've already mentioned is we want it to be able to hold a negative charge if it's going to take one. Essentially, what's going to be most stable on its own? And now briefly, let's review the SN1 and SN2 reactions from organic chemistry. An SN1 reaction, also known as a uni unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction, proceeds in two steps. The first step, SN1 reactions, also known as unimolecular nucleophilic substitutions, proceed in two steps. In the first step, the leaving group is going to depart. So in this case, we have bromine as our leaving group. And if we look back at our chart, we see that bromine makes an excellent leaving group. So this makes sense. This would be favorable for just to absorb those electrons and float and be happy. Once the leaving group leaves, we have this carbocation intermediate. In this, and this is very reactive. We've got a positive charge here. In the second step, the nucleophile is going to attack the planar carbo carbocation from either side, resulting in a racemic mixture of products. So in this case, we have chlorine that could attack from the top, or it could attack from the bottom. So we don't know the chirality of this product. An important characteristics of SN1 reactions you want to know is that the rate is entirely dependent on the concentration of substrate and the reaction constant. We also want to know that SN1 reactions are favored in polar protic solvents. This is because they can stabilize that carbocation intermediate through solvation. They also typically involve substrates with more substituated carbons because this will make the carbocation more stable. Now let's talk about SN1's big brother, SN2. SN2 reactions, known as bimolecular nucleophilic substitutions occur in a single step. The nucleophile is going to attack the electrophile substrate simultaneously 
as the leaving group departs, the nucleophile must perform a backside attack, which leads to an inversion of stereochemistry at the reaction center. If the nucleophile and leaving group have the same priority level, the R and S configuration is going to be flipped around. So what favors S in two reactions? Less substituted carbons because the steric hindrance inhibits the nucleophile from accessing the electrophilic substrate carbon in that backside attack. And in this case, the rate of the reaction is dependent on both the concentration of the nucleophile and the substrate. SN2 reactions are also favored in polar aprotic solvents, which do not solvate the nucleophile as effectively, making it more reactive. And this is a nice cheat sheet I like using for trying to predict the difference between an SN1 and an SN2 reaction. We see that the big barrier preventing them, SN2, it's steric hindrance, so we want a small, non-bulky molecule. For the nucleophile, typically the stronger the nucleophile we see, the more SN2 reaction it's going to do. We already talked about solvents. And for stereochemistry, this is the big one, is that SN2 is going to invert the stereochem, and SN1 reactions are going to leave you with a racemic mixture, meaning you have 50-50 R and S and antimers. Understanding these nucleophiles, electrophiles, and leaving groups are essential for mastering the mechanisms of SN1 and SN2 reactions, and most importantly for doing well on the chemphys section of the MCAT. Thank you so much for watching our video, and I will see you next time.